3, the following afternoon. Everyone seemed on edge. K kept finding excuses to leave the room and Shoyo. Well Tadashi hadn't figured him out yet but he could tell he was nervous. Shoyo kept bouncing his leg under the table. Should we cover the rules? Tadashi opened the folder and put his glasses on. No nightclubs unless you're with K and definitely no gay clubs. No dating anyone else obviously. Tadashi paused waiting for confirmation. Shoyo shrugged. No dating. Got it. In the beginning, K will introduce you as his friend. You won't show any affection in public. Or at all. Shoyo interrupted. Not until he comes out. Tadashi clarified. And then what will be required of me? Nothing you can't handle. You've kissed a man before correct? Shoyo sighed in frustration. Look I don't think I'll throw up in my mouth if I have to kiss K. I'm asking how far we'll be taking this little charade? Nothing inappropriate. Considering you're being paid. Just things like walking arm in arm. Holding hands. Maybe a light kiss. And sweet little looks for the paparazzi. Shoyo grinned. I can do sweet. Prove it. Tadashi mumbled over his reading glasses. After meeting Shoyo in person. He had his doubts about his sweet factor. Anyway. We'll bring in a stylist and K and I will decide on your look. My look? Yes. Your look. Tadashi took off his glasses. K's a trendsetter. When he wears something out in public the fashion world takes notice. Pictures are taken and before you know it. Everyone is copying his look. You need to compliment that style without overpowering it. Shoyo looked down at himself. I have style. I can be stylish. Again Tadashi had his doubts. He glanced at Shoyo's ripped jeans and green striped t-shirt. There was no shortage of hotness. But he looked like a stars. They're just like us. Magazine spread featuring Jennifer Aniston's Sunday morning trip to the coffee bean. Tadashi chuckled to himself as he realized. Not for the first time. Why so many people assumed he was gay. If you're going to complain about a new wardrobe. That you get to keep when the job is done. Then maybe I was a bit hasty. Fine I'll take the clothes. But I want the Range Rover too. And why a Range Rover? Why not a sports car? Tadashi sighed. The last thing we need. Is you killing someone on PCH. Pacific Coast Highway. But it's okay if I kill someone on Sunset? Tadashi narrowed his eyes at him. All right fine. Shoyo acquiesced. No sports cars or vehicular homicide. You drive a hard bargain. Tadashi ignored his sarcasm. Even though the slight curve at the corner of his lips said he kind of liked it. I've created a cover story. You'll memorize it. It's your job to get to know K. So that when you're together in public. It's believable. I've got this Tadashi. Shoyo said impatiently. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I could look at a rock and cry because it's so. Damn gray. Which makes me blue. And reminds me of the dolly my druggy daddy never gave me as a kid. And before you know it. I've got real tears in my eyes. Druggy daddy? Tadashi opened another folder. The one containing the research he'd done on Shoyo. Me and him. Homeless on the streets of New York. Works every time. Wasn't your father a college professor? Shoyo shrugged. Still is. Tadashi tried not to roll his eyes. Actors. He closed the folder and tucked it back in his briefcase. Make you a wealthy man. Tadashi leaned forward. Folding his arms on the table. Do you always have a sarcastic reply? Shoyo opened his mouth. Then closed it quickly. He looked down at his hands and then met Tadashi's gaze again. I've had a tough year. People I loved and trusted let me down. And I won't make that mistake again. And by mistake you mean. Loving and trusting. Exactly. And honestly I'm okay with having a script for my life right now. Shoyo tapped the paper with his finger. You know. As long as you two don't screw me over. Nobody's going to screw you over Shoyo. I think you'll find this to be a very lucrative arrangement. If you sell it right. No problem. Selling love has been my job my whole life. You want me to be the excited. Getting high on life boyfriend? Put me in front of Oprah and I'll have her wishing she was me. Just don't pull a Tom Cruise and jump on the furniture. Kay said walking into the room. Sorry I had to make a quick phone call. I'll take it we're in business. 
Tadashi looked at Shoyo. It was his call. As far as he was concerned, Shoyo would be crazy to pass up the opportunity. Yes, his attitude could use a little adjusting, but he really was perfect for the role. Tadashi believed the two of them would make a beautiful couple and was pretty sure all of America would agree with him. K and Shoyo would soon be the it couple. Tadashi would keep his best client and possibly gain a new one. Shoyo picked up the pen. Show me where to sign. The dotted line usually works. K offered his fake smile. Shoyo gave him a heated look and signed the contract. Well, this should be fun. His eyes darting between the two of them. Shoyo stood in front of the window that looked out onto the pool and guest house that would soon be his new home. He knew he should back out of the deal right now. While he still had the chance. Just walk away. But the truth was. He was tired. The last six months had been hell. He'd gone through almost all of his savings traveling between the coast going to every audition he could manage. He was never quite right for the part. All the career-related rejection would have been enough for anyone. His boyfriend dumping him on top of it? Yeah, the last few months had taken its toll. What he really needed to find was a role where all that cooped-up anger and frustration could win him an Oscar or at least an Emmy. Hell a People's Choice Award would be welcome at this point. But finding that role had been an exercise in futility. Shoyo had started young in the business. His mother saw a spark in her only child. A kid with a big personality. Who wasn't afraid of anything or anyone. His very first audition landed him the role of 10-year-old Brandon Cartwright. Illegitimate heir to the Cartwright fortune. On the long-running daytime soap opera, Light of Day. He'd been playing the same character his entire career and he'd only recently realized how lucky he had been. None of that changed the fact that he was a seasoned highly trained actor. He went to Yale for God's sake. This scheme with Kay made a joke of everything he'd worked so hard for. A job that paid extremely well but still a goddamn joke. Kay walked back into the room after seeing Tadashi to the door. Shoyo turned to his new, albeit fake, boyfriend. Tadashi was right. Kay was a full-on style maven. His blonde hair was pushed back with a few loose strands hanging over his face. His white canvas shorts showed off his legs and that black sheer blouse. Shoyo had to work to tear his eyes away. Okay, so the scenery wouldn't be so bad. Inside the house and out. He forced a smile. Tadashi said I'm supposed to get to know you. That won't be necessary. And I don't want you getting cozy with my assistant either. You'll be meeting her soon but she knows nothing about this. I keep my relationship with her professional. We don't go to movies together and she doesn't run my bath for me. Yeah, I've never had one of those. Two decades in the business and I've never had a fucking assistant. Kay sat on the sofa motioning for Shoyo to do the same. You like that word? The F word? Does it offend your fragile sensibilities? There was that sarcastic tone again. He'd have to work on that. Kay chuckled. No. It doesn't offend me and honestly all this anger makes it really easy for me to not like you. Which is probably for the best. Frankly I'd rather act chummy with you. Than be chummy with you. Shoyo wanted to say it again. Fuck you K. Fuck you and this stupid idea and also fuck you for thinking anyone gives a flying fuck about your fucking sexuality. Except Shoyo knew better. Of course people cared. Agents cared. Producers cared. Casting agents cared, the audience cared, sorry, I guess I didn't realize how bitter I really am. Even I don't like being around me sometimes. Kay's only reaction was a slight smile. My inner circle is small and I'd like to keep it that way. This house is my refuge. I don't host big parties here. My family lives on the east coast and they rarely visit. We usually meet in Aspen for the holidays. And my assistant meets me on the set. So you being here is kind of a big deal. I'm honored. Shoyo's eyes wandered around the room. After he left the day before. He'd tried to remember if he'd seen any family photos in the living room. Looking around again he didn't find any. No you're not. And that's okay. The last thing I need is someone worshipping the ground I walk on and then committing suicide when I kick them out. Shoyo huffed out a laugh. Good God that's a bit. Charming? 
predictable, whatever. K waved his hand. I imagine you'll take the money and run without so much of a goodbye. Tadashi knows his stuff. Shoyo met K's gaze. Are you sure you want to do this? I mean why not just? Just what Shoyo? Keep living a lie? Why did you come out? Surely you knew the risk. Actually I had no idea it would be as bad as it was. Shoyo admitted. And if you must know. I did it for my boyfriend. We had a good life. We were out in our private lives. Just not at my work. Neither of us knew the toll it would take. K softened his tone. If you're not up for this. You need to tell me. You're obviously still healing. Healing? Shoyo wasn't healing. He was surviving. Rock bottom didn't seem that far away. Or maybe this was rock bottom. Being K Tsukishima's fake. Oh god was he really going to do this? Yes. Yes. He was. And if he couldn't look himself in the mirror for a while that was okay too. At least he wouldn't have to see the angry bitter person he'd become. I have nothing to lose. I've already lost it all. But with this, maybe I can get my life back. Shoyo fought like hell to keep the tears at bay. But he couldn't keep his voice from quivering. I just know how much is missing and I need a job. I was the breadwinner. Wait. Hold up. Did he leave you because you got fired? Shoyo couldn't hold Kei's gaze. It's more complicated than that. Is it? Good question. Shoyo didn't have the answer and he certainly didn't want to think too hard about it. He just wanted his life back including his boyfriend. And on top of that he was angry at himself for divulging so much personal information. He straightened his shoulders and forced a somewhat pleasant smile. If you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about him. I probably wouldn't either. Excuse me? K. You literally live in a glass house. Shoyo gestured with his hand toward the massive window. Maybe you're not in a position to make judgments about your fake boyfriend's real-life ex-boyfriend. I'm sorry that was out of line. Let's keep it professional. K stood up and walked into the kitchen. Shoyo breathed a sigh of relief and followed him. My assistant will be told that you're traveling back and forth between coasts at the moment. So I offered you the guest house. This is the kitchen. Shoyo sat at the breakfast bar. He stifled a laugh at Kay's introduction to his house and smiled brightly. Yes. I recognize a kitchen when I see one. Kay crossed his arms. So much for sophisticated New York humor. Are you sure you're not from New Jersey? Shoyo waved his hand. I'm sorry I promise I'm not always like this. And I promise I'm not the enemy. Right. Shoyo pointed at Kay and winked. Not the enemy. I'll try to keep that in mind. He grinned again, relieving some of the pressure in the room. I still can't believe we're actually going to do this. Kay smiled. You have a cute laugh. It makes up for the... Never mind. There's something I wanted to ask you. He leaned down resting his elbows on the other side of the breakfast bar so that they were eye to eye. You mentioned a vibe and I've been wondering. Oh, the gay vibe. Yeah, you made the mistake of taking off your ever so stylish sunglasses. So, I looked at you wrong? I wouldn't say wrong. K covered his eyes for a second. Oh god, what did I do? Shoyo laughed under his breath. Was K really this clueless? Well, straight guys admire things like watches and ties. However, that's not where your eyes went. Where did they go? I'm pretty sure you know. I should have been more discreet. A blush started creeping up Kay's neck. He straightened back up and tried to cover it with his hand. You like my lips. Shoyo was having fun now. He'd found a weakness and he sure as hell was going to exploit it. A lot. Kay glared at him. Don't flirt with me. We're keeping this professional remember? Oh come on. Kay. I wouldn't be here if you didn't find me attractive. Besides. I'm not flirting. You asked and I'm telling you what gave you away. Your eyes lingered where straight men's don't. K looked down at his hands. You have nice arms. Now who's flirting? Shoyo teased. I'm just saying that I noticed them that day. You were wearing a sleeveless shirt and I noticed. This was interesting. K was full on blushing. From cheek to chest. And you have incredibly distracting eyes. Shoyo said in a low sexy voice he hadn't heard himself use in quite some time. K looked away again. You wouldn't know that, or anything else about me, if I kept my sunglasses on. 
I couldn't stop looking at them. That's how I know where they went. K cleared his throat and put up his hand. Okay, this conversation scares you? K folded his arms, standing in a protective stance. Cards on the table? Shoyo motioned with his hands as if he were a dealer in Vegas. Lay him out. We're not going to fuck. Ever. Contract or not. Yes. You're handsome and I'll have no problem selling this. But that's where it ends. Shoyo chuckled. So you can say that word. I told you I'm in love with someone else but once again I find your arrogance amusing. I'm not arrogant. K took a deep breath. I'm scared okay? I don't want to lose everything I've worked so hard for. Then don't do this coming out thing. Nobody is forcing you to risk everything. You're not even in a relationship. No one saying if you really loved me you tell everyone. Are you trying to talk yourself out of a job because? Shoyo put up his hands. You're right. You know what you're doing and like I said I've got nothing to lose. 4. K desperately wanted to back out of the deal. Truth be told. He figured Tadashi wouldn't be able to find someone with the right qualities. Known but not famous. In need of work but not desperate for it. Unattached. Gay. Gorgeous. Why was Tadashi so damn good at his job? As if anything about this was his job. K knew he needed someone who wouldn't worship the ground he walked on. Even other actors could sometimes act like rabid fans and that would get older faster than Shoyo's cynicism. What bothered him was the way Shoyo looked at him. With eyes that seared into his soul. Reading every secret. Every vulnerability he had and then laughing at it. Mocking it with his eyes and that sly little grin. It was unnerving. It was also untrue. K realized he was being ridiculous. Eyes that seared. On second thought maybe a fan was exactly what K needed. Someone young in the business who would hang on his every word. Someone who would listen to him and follow instructions without hesitation. Shoyo was the opposite of that. God. Had he and Tadashi made the wrong choice? K stood there frozen. Wondering how to end this deal here and now. He eyed Shoyo as he walked over to the sliding glass door. A fan wouldn't walk around. They'd wait for further instructions. Eyes wide like a hungry puppy dog. Not Shoyo. He opened the door and let the warm sun hit his face. I can't wait to get out of that hotel I've been staying in. He leaned against the doorframe. K walked over and stood next to him. His arms protectively folded like they'd been most of the morning. Don't you have friends here? I do but as you can see I'm a total bitch right now and I don't want to have to be the nice house guess. You can't just take their bedroom. You have to play with their kids and eat dinner and smile. A hotel was easier. You need to heal. Shoyo looked at him with those big brown eyes and Kay quickly looked away. Shoyo was the one for the job whether Kay liked it or not. Even though he rubbed Kay the wrong way. Shoyo seemed honest and forthright. Not to mention strong. Yes. Shoyo had been through a lot this past year. But K could see his underlying strength. In fact he found it more attractive than he would ever admit. Because that's not what this was nor would it ever be. This was a business deal. Period. K stepped outside. Just relax for a while. Get your bearings. And in a few months you can take on the world again. Shoyo kicked off his shoes and dipped a toe in the pool and then turned back around. Cards on the table? Shoyo hesitated for a few seconds. I really need that. K could tell this was a hard thing for Shoyo to admit. He was trying to hide it well. But the pain of what he'd been going through was evident. K took Shoyo by the elbow. Good. Come with me. I think you'll like your new digs. K led Shoyo past the pool to a small guest house. You'll have complete privacy out here and everything is brand new. You'll be the first one to stay out here since it was remodeled a while back. This is bigger than my apartment in New York and a full kitchen too. I love to cook. That makes one of us. I'm a terrible cook. Kay stood back feeling proud of the renovation. He'd worked closely with the designer to make the house including the guest house more his style. Clean and modern. He purchased the house purely for its privacy and security. Not because he loved it. But looking at it now and seeing it through Shoyo's eyes. He felt a sense of satisfaction that he made the right choice. 
Shoyo ran his fingers across the white marble countertops. Do you have a workout room too? K pointed over his shoulder with his thumb. Those heels behind us there are where I ride my bike. I'm more of a treadmill guy. Too much traffic in New York. I'll ask Yachi to get right on that. K pulled an index card out of his pocket and looked at it. Hesitating slightly. This was it. Once he handed over this card it was pretty much a done deal. He looked Shoyo in the eye and offered the card to him. These are the security codes for the doors and gates. They are all different so put them in your phone or something. Shoyo took the card. Thank you for trusting me. K shook his head. I don't. I'm scared shiftless that you'll turn on me. But we're in this now and I need you. K hoped Shoyo could hear the sincerity in his voice and take him seriously. He hoped he'd understand just how serious this was and act accordingly. And he prayed for a good outcome. Are we good? Shoyo still wasn't sure why K felt the need to follow through with this crazy plan or even that it will achieve his goal. Hollywood was very fickle after all. But that wasn't his concern. He took a quick glance around the guest house. I need my career back and if this is what it takes. I'm all in. Good. K was slightly relieved. On to business then. I start shooting season 6 in two weeks. So we'll go out a few times before then for the photo ops. How do you know the paparazzi will be there? Tadashi will handle that part. So, you'll let me know what to wear for the photo ops? K looked Shoyo up and down. You'll go to my stylist this week and she'll do some casual stuff and a little more formal as well. I'd like to take you to a friend's wedding this weekend if you're up for it. Again just as friends. Whatever you need, Shoyo said with a smile. K looked at him skeptically. Why so nice all of a sudden? Surely you want to give me crap about dressing you. Tadashi said I can keep the clothes. I knew there had to be an ulterior motive. K tried not to smile back but the effort proved impossible. Shoyo bit his lip. And the Range Rover. Wow. K chuckled. Are there any other demands I should know about? Don't expect anything of me in private. The smile quickly left K's face. Along with the positive energy they managed to have in the room for about five seconds. Now who's being arrogant? Whatever. Just when I'm on set. So to speak. I'll shine for you that's all I'm saying. And off camera you'll be angry and bitter. Got it. Shoyo grabbed K's arm as he tried to leave. Look I just. It doesn't matter. K shot him a glare. Do your thing when we're in public. That's all I ask. I will. I promise and I'm sorry that I'm coming across like a complete bitch. This is just a crazy situation you know. I know. K softened his tone. And look. I'm sorry I told you we're never going to fuck. I mean we won't of course. But I'm sorry I said it like that. It was rude. Don't worry. Shoyo smiled. It hurt more when I heard we wouldn't be canoodling in public. K laughed. God you're something else. He pointed towards the door. Should we go get your things? I don't have much. Just a suitcase and carry-on I brought to the main house. He finished the sentence off with a stuffy British accent. K rewarded him with a smile he was trying very hard to suppress. They walked side by side past the pool. Shoyo with his hands tucked in his pocket. K was the same height as his ex-boyfriend. So just a few inches taller than him. K could easily put his arm around his shoulders and Shoyo could wrap his arm around K's waist. When the time came, that's the way they should walk for the cameras. Shoyo grinned thinking it might be rather fun to put on this little charade. Blocking the scenes right down to how they held hands. Maybe this could actually feel like real acting work. What's so funny? Nothing. Shoyo picked up both bags. I've got this. See you in the morning. I stocked the fridge for you but the coffee maker in the main house is much better. So feel free to come in and use it. Well, I do love good coffee and I've always wanted an excuse to say the main house so you're on. Shoyo took his luggage to the guest house and dropped it by the bed. Then went back to the door. He leaned against the frame looking out at the beauty of the backyard. It looked like a resort. With the gorgeous pool and lounge chairs with thick white cushions he could sink into. And why waste a single second of time here he thought.
It took about 30 seconds for him to change into his swim trunks. He had only bought one pair. A simple black style with a blue stripe going down the side. It was comfortable and it fit well enough to do laps. And this pool was certainly long enough to do that. Shoyo looked at himself in the mirror. He'd always had a nice body. Toned arms and legs. A flat stomach with abs that were defined but not bulging. A swimmer's body he was often told. Even with the pressures the soap world put on him to enhance his body he managed to stay natural. One of the producers suggested Shoyo try to plump up his lips a little bit and he all but told him to fuck off. He would never succumb to the pressures of producers and directors. Most of them looked like they never seen a green smoothie or vitamin or even a salad in their lifetime. Shoyo walked outside and threw a towel on one of the lounge chairs. He stood at the edge of the pool staring down into the calm water. This could be the easiest job I've ever had. He thought to himself right before diving into the pool.